Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. Hello and welcome to this first episode of our Photography Noise mini-series produced to celebrate the arrival of the Noiseless AI extension for Luminar Neo. Over the next three episodes, we will tell you everything you need to know about the Photography Noise and how to minimize it and reduce it with the help of the new Noiseless AI extension. In this first episode, we will focus on the noise itself and learn more about the types of noise and what causes them. In the end, we will also tell you an excellent tool to help you discover how your camera handles noise. So make sure you stay until the end to learn more about it. So as you can see, I am in Luminar Neo and we're gonna be using some examples here to show you what I'm talking about, what are some of the types of noise and so on. But first of all, let's start to talk about a uh, photography noise, what it is. Well, in digital photographs, the term noise refers to a certain type of visual distortion. It looks similar to the grain found in film photography, but it can also look like a spot of discoloration when it's really bad and too much noise can really ruin a photo. Now, from a technical point of view, image noise is a visual manifestation of a lower signal to noise ratio. It is measured in decibels while the amount of noise that you may consider acceptable may differ from what the next guy may accept, most professional photographers want to see photos with at least 30 decibel signal-to-noise ratio. Generally, of course, less noise on the image, the better. So that's the definition of a photography noise, and now let's have a look at the three types of noise. So for that, we're gonna move into this folder. Let's make it a little bit smaller, and we're gonna start with this image here. So first of all, the first type of your noise is a random noise. So the random noise is a spread of imperfect pixels with either color or intensity different from a surrounding pixels. It appears when you photograph in a low light conditions, just like on this image, and use a high ISO value. Now looking at it, this was captured with 8000 on your ISO. The distribution of the noise in two photographs taken in the same condition will be different. So if I take the same image, one after the other, the noise will be spread across the image differently. So that's your random noise. Then we have the fixed pattern noise. So let's have a look. For this, we're going to use this image right here. And the fixed pattern noise is more obvious than the random noise because the imperfect pixels have a higher intensity. It appears when you expose the camera to a lot of light and high temperatures. In this case, the distribution of the noise in two photographs taken in the same condition is the same. So as you can see, this image was captured with ISO 100. So it's not really high. However, because of the amount of light coming into the camera and the amount of warmth, we actually have a fair bit of noise across the entire image. So that's your fixed pattern noise. And finally, the last one is the banding noise. The banding noise looks like stripes and is camera dependent. You can't do much about it, but it highlights when having high ISO values, large areas in shadows, and certain white balances. So this is a great example. It's not a high quality image. However, it's really visible. You can see the bands on the horizon and in the sky. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning the banding noise. So three types of noise. Random noise caused by low light conditions and use of high ISO values. Then we have the fixed pattern noise created by a lot of light and high temperatures coming into the camera. 
And finally, the banding noise. Once again, very camera dependent, and you need to see about how high you can go with your ISO, how much areas and how much shadows you can capture, and to see what white balance causes this effect. And to make it even more complicated, there are two styles of noise, luminance noise and color noise. So for this, we're gonna move into the next folder, and let's have a look at the examples here. We have one right here. So let's start by looking at that. So first, let's talk about the luminance noise. So luminance noise looks similar to the film grain that many photographers are used to. It's a variation in brightness. Color noise looks like a brightly colored pixels that contrast from colors in the rest of the image. With the color noise, you will see a blue pixels next to red ones and green ones. And I have an example right here. Now it's really kind of zoomed in. However, it gives you a good idea of what we are talking about. Color noise also tends to look splotchy and blurry, just like on this example here. Now luminance noise is usually easy to fix using the luminosity slider in Luminar, where color noise is a bit more finicky and can result in some excessive blurring and smoothing in your image. Now, when you're adjusting it, you have to be gentle because applying too much noise reduction can make your image look plastic. So a color noise and luminance noise. So by now, you know the definition of a photography noise. You also know the three types of noise and what causes them. And you know the two styles of noise. You know the luminance noise and the color noise. And now it's time to look at what causes the image noise in photography. So again, we're gonna move to another folder. Let's just zoom out. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is a high ISO. So we're gonna use this example right here. As you can see, again, lots of noise here, and the ISO is on 3200. So as you guessed, the first reason why we get the noise in our photos is a high ISO. The higher ISO, which you may need when shooting in a low light, is the main problem causing more image noise. In your photos, the higher the ISO, the more distortion or noise shows in the image. And this is regardless of what shutter speed you use. Sometimes you may feel tempted to increase the ISO to get the more light onto the sensor, but along with the higher ISO, you're risking the increased noise. The next reason why we get the noise on our images can be a small camera sensor size. So let's have a look at another example, which we have right here. And when you look at this image, you can see that it's ISO 100. However, it was captured with a mobile phone where really the sensor is very small. And when you zoom in, you can see the amount of noise. So let's have a look at it. When it comes to noise, sensor size matters. On these cameras, noise can reach unacceptable levels at any point. By the time you reach ISO 800 or higher, the picture may end up looking like an impressionist painting and lose sharpness, details, and color. Even professional level crop sensor cameras present this issue. Cameras with larger sensors, such as DSLR or mirrorless cameras, produce lower grain at higher ISO. The larger the sensor, the better grain at comparable speeds. Now, the third cause of the image noise is the shutter speed. So let's have a look at another example. And we have this lovely long exposure here. Long exposure method can introduce static, which can also be a cause of digital noise, specifically the luminance noise. So let's zoom in here. Let's have a look what we have here. Especially at this part, you can see the amount of noise here. When using a longer shutter speed, try to ease the noise by reducing ISO or taking advantage of in-camera noise reduction. And finally, the fourth cause of image noise in our photos are the shadows. So let's again go for another example. It's kind of daylight or early morning with the ISO 100. And when you zoom in into the shadows, you can't really see anything. However, first let's talk about it. If you're shooting in a daylight, the grain may be not so obvious unless you look at the shadow areas. Grain shows up more against a darker subject or backgrounds. It gets even worse if using image editing software such as Luminar Neo, you lighten an image. Then the grain and the shadow areas will become even more obvious. So let's do that. Let's jump in our edit module. And in edit module, let's jump into our develop tool. In the develop tool, let's just increase the exposure. 
and open up the shadows a little bit. Now we can zoom in to let's say 300 and let's just have a look at the amount of noise here. There is a lot even though it wasn't visible to start with. So again with the shadows they can also cause image noise in your photos especially when you need to open them up or add a little bit of brightness to them. To finish the tutorial we should answer the question if the photo noise is bad. Now noise in photography is an ideal. Noise seriously complicates your ability to print images or share them digitally in a high resolution. Noise seriously complicates the ability to print images or share them digitally in a high resolution. When it comes to noise, the best advice is to avoid it in the first place. And you can find out more about how to do that in the second episode of this mini-series. As you are shopping for cameras or planning photography excursions, consider how noise may come into play for you and the shots you intend to take. Avoiding noise on the front end will make your editing session much easier. And I will tell you in a moment how to find out how well a certain camera handles digital noise. The best way to denoise an image in a post-processing is to practice. Clean noise reduction takes some work and finesse. Don't be afraid to reproduce old noisy images until you're confident with your technique. Make sure as you work that you aren't losing details in your images and keeping some noise is always preferable to lose significant image detail. But before we're going to talk about what is photo noise reduction, let's come back to how to find out how well your camera handles digital noise. The service we use to find out how well our cameras can handle digital noise is called DxO Mark Service. The DxO Labs and their DxO Mark Service tests digital cameras for overall image quality. But they also do specific tests to determine cameras' noise levels at all ISO. You can search the sensor ranking database for your camera model and it will tell you the highest ISO at which DxO measures acceptable noise level. So while we're at the website, let's have a look at how to find your own camera and how to see the results. So as you can see, we are on the DxO mark and here in the search bar, we're just gonna write the camera. So I use Sony A7R Mark IV and once I'm finished with it, I just click on the little search icon. Now it brings me the results and what I'm looking for is a sensor review or sensor test. So let's go for the sensor review where you can see the full review on how the sensor performs. So in overall, the camera has a 99 points on the sensor, and then you can go through the full list to see how well it performs. So by looking at it, you can see that it performs quite well until 3344 ISO. However, this will very much vary based on your own camera. So make sure that you go ahead and check out this website regardless if you want to find out more about your own current camera or if you're in the market to purchase a new camera in the future, this is a great space where you can find out more about its performance. And now to finish it off, we're just going to quickly touch up on what is photo noise reduction. The photo noise reduction is a way to reduce image noise in a post-processing. The traditional Luminar's denoise tool smooths the image by evaluating the differences between values of adjustment pixels in the use of the intensity or the color of the pixel as a reference. The denoise tool has its limitation just as many standard denoise tools across the editing market. This is where the artificial intelligence arriving with the noiseless AI will help. The tool will accurately detect and eliminate noise even on images with a higher noise level typical for wildlife, low light or long exposure photography. So there you have it. This is what we learned today. Now we know what photography noise is, what are the three types of noise, what are the two styles of noise, what causes the image noise in a photography, if the photo noise is bad for your images, and also how you can reduce the noise. Of course, much more about that in the future episodes. And finally, don't forget that if you want to find out more about your camera, how it performs and so on, check out the DxO Mark service as it's really beneficial and handy for your current or future devices. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo Shortcut Cheat Sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. 
While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.